Hey hockey fans, welcome back. It's Mike here, Sasquatch NHL. Really glad to have you along. Another quick conference final update for you guys. We're going to talk East and West. The Edmonton Oilers on the brink of elimination. Colorado has really motored along there in the Western Conference. The New York Rangers had a chance to take that 3-0 series lead today. And the Tampa Bay Lightning struck back. They got that 3-2 win. Andre Palat with that late goal. So we're going to talk a little bit about each series. But I also thought it would be fun to go down memory lane just a little bit and talk about reverse sweeps in NHL history. The only chance the Oilers are going to have if they're going to get back into the Western Conference Final. So the Eastern Conference Final, the Rangers go into Tampa today to try to grab that 3-0 stranglehold on the series but it didn't happen. They did get a decent start. Second period, they got a couple power play goals. Mika Zibanejad with his 10th of the playoffs. And then Chris Kreider, also his 10th of the playoffs, making it 2 to nothing. Looks like the Rangers are really on a roll and they were really set to take that 3-0 series lead. But the Lightning strike back. They say, nope, not so fast. Nikita Kucherov with a quick response goal, making it 2-1 to one late in the second period. And then Lightning pile on two more in the third. Andre Palat gets that really late goal in the third period to give them that 3-2 lead. And the series there is now 2-1. Lightning with a big chance to tie the series here in the next game. Game four, it's going to be huge. Got to see how the Rangers are going to respond here after giving up that goal late in the game to the Lightning. And it could be a really critical swing point in this series. Got to keep an eye on that going forward. Again, Andre Palat played a great game today. He had that goal late in the game, grabbed that first star for the Lightning. Andre Vasilevsky continues to backstop this team. Really critical performance today for him. He had 28 saves on 30 shots against for a 9.33 save percentage. He grabbed the second star tonight. And of course, the captain for the Lightning, Steven Stamkos, performing great today, had a goal and an assist. Really critical moment there, grabbing the tying goal in the third period, allowing the Lightning to take that lead late in the third period and get the win tonight against the Rangers. So they're going to be 2-1. to one. Rangers have the series lead. Really critical game four coming up. Be sure to tune in for that. Out in the Western Conference, of course, the Colorado Avalanche with that 3-0 series lead against the Edmonton Oilers. Oilers came in with a lot of momentum after that victory over the Calgary Flames in the Battle of Alberta. And I really thought that they were primed and ready to kind of keep moving forward, but that's not what has happened so far. The Colorado Avalanche just playing extremely disciplined and strong hockey. They continue to click on the power play. Nate McKinnon just keeps motoring along. You got Kale McCarr stepping up really big in this series. He was a little bit absent in round two, but he's definitely showed up here in the conference finals. Miko Rantanen, Land Skog, and even Franco, the backup goaltender, has played amazing for Colorado as they have grabbed a critical 3-0 series lead like we've talked about. The Oilers look like they're on life support right now. They look exhausted. You could see it in McDavid's eyes in that last game. Leon Dreisaitl, he looks a little bit banged up, to be honest. And the Avs keep going after him. They're being very physical when they can, being smart about it and not taking dumb penalties. The Oilers, on the other hand, now they're facing some adversity. Evander Kane with that really dirty hit on Nazem Kadri there in the corner. Kadri is injured now. He's going to be out the rest of the series. That's all the news we have on that. I would expect him maybe to be out in the next round if the Avs move forward. It looked like maybe a collarbone or a shoulder type of injury, but I'm not a doctor, so I don't want to speculate too much, but it didn't look like he was doing well as he headed to the locker room. So Evander Kane, he's going to face a one-game suspension. That means he's out for game four, but he could potentially get back into the series if the Oilers are able to stay alive. We've got that game four going at home. I'm sure the crowd's going to be energized, and Connor McDavid is not going to go out without trying to make a little bit of noise and a big effort. I'm sure Edmonton is going to throw it all on the table in game four. They're going to have a loud crowd energized and behind them, despite the fact that Evander Kane is going to be out. They have found ways to win throughout, and I'm sure they can do it in game four. We'll have to to see what happens so i thought it would be fun to talk a little bit about reverse sweeps in the nhl and how rare it is and how hard it is to do it's only happened four times in history in the nhl one of those happened in the stanley cup final and that was the toronto maple Leafs, which we can talk about here in just a second but it's very rare we're running right around two percent if the totals are right that i pulled off the internet Right now, through 2022, there's been 199 teams that have faced a 3-0 deficit in a series, and only four of them have come back to win those series. So, very rare, about a 2% chance, but I'm saying, for the Oilers, there's a chance. So if we go all the way back to 1942, the Stanley Cup Final, it happened for the very first time. The Toronto Maple Leafs were facing the Detroit Red Wings, and they came back from a 3-0 series deficit. It was the only time that ever happened in the Stanley Cup Final to this day. 
So the Maple Leafs accomplished that feat at home at the Maple Leaf Gardens way back in the day there. They won game four after coming back from a two-goal deficit. They won it in overtime to kind of swing that series around. They set a couple of interesting records there for attendance in game seven. Another interesting note there in that series for the Detroit Red Wings, their coach Jack Adams, who now the trophy for the best coach in the league is named after. He actually missed the final three games of that series because he was suspended. So really interesting stuff. I would encourage you guys to go out there on the internet, try to look up some of these articles about these series that have happened in the past and some of the nuances and stories that went along with them. But that was the nexus and the beginning of the history for reverse sweeps in the NHL. And the Toronto Maple Leafs did it in dramatic fashion in Game 7 at home to win the Stanley Cup. So fast forward 33 years to the Stanley Cup quarterfinals in the Eastern Conference. The Islanders facing off against the Pittsburgh Penguins. The Penguins jump out to a 3-0 series lead. And you know what happens next. The Islanders start the turnaround. Coach Al Arbor at the time had benched Billy Smith. Billy Smith ended up being the go-to goaltender in the 80s for the Islanders when they went on their run of four consecutive Stanley Cups. But back then, he got benched in favor of Chico Resch. Through the course of the first three games in that series, Billy Smith had given up 13 goals, and Pittsburgh took that commanding lead. Al Arbor had seen enough, and that's where the legend of Chico Resch came into play. Game four, he got the call. The Penguins tallied just four goals over the next four games, and the Islanders won every single game. They won the series in game seven, including a one to nothing defeat in game seven, where Resch got a shutout, 30 saves he made, and he propelled them into the next round of the playoffs. The Islanders unfortunately went on to lose in the next series against Philadelphia, but crazy enough, they fell down 3-0 in that series and came back. They did lose in game seven. So almost two in the same year, that would have been crazy if that had actually happened. But the Flyers went on to win the championship and uh, a lot of great stories from those series back then. I would encourage you guys again to go out, read about it, read about Billy Smith, Al Arbor, Chico Resch, just some legendary names from the 70s and 80s. So we fast forward again to 2010. That's 35 years since it happened prior in that Islanders and Penguins series. This time it happened between the Philadelphia Flyers and Boston Bruins. Interesting arc there with the Flyers who defeated the Islanders in that next series back in 75. The Flyers this time were the victors again against the Bruins. So the Bruins mounted a 3-0 series lead in this one and the Flyers came storming back. Just a crazy series. I remember watching this one and just being in awe the entire time. It was the fifth meeting in the playoffs at the time between Boston and Philadelphia. And not only did the Bruins lead the series 3 to nothing, they also led game 7 3 to nothing. And the Flyers stormed back. Simone Gagne got that game winning goal, making it 4 to 3, and the Flyers powered through to make it to the next round. A couple of names from that series that might come to mind are Daniel Briere, he had five goals. Milan Lucic also played for the Boston Bruins at the time, he had five goals as well. Backup, Michael Layton came in for an injured Brian Boucher. Brian Boucher, of course, an announcer for ESPN now. Layton came in, played the last couple of games for that series as Boucher went down to injury. A lot of cool stories coming out of that one as well. So the Flyers moved on to the Stanley Cup final. They eventually lost to the Chicago Blackhawks. Blackhawks were a buzzsaw at the time during those Stanley Cup years. Another note to the Boston Bruins, even though they lost that reverse sweep to the Flyers that year, they came back big the next season taking out the Vancouver Canucks in 2011 to win the Stanley Cup, so a great rebound for them despite the heartbreak that happened to the Flyers in 2010. We move four years forward to 2014, the Western Conference first round, Los Angeles Kings facing off against the San Jose Sharks, and it happens again. The Kings overcome a 3-0 series deficit. It propels them forward to an eventual Stanley Cup championship that year. They set a record for most elimination games won in a single playoff year for a Stanley Cup champion while facing elimination, and that was seven total games. Just an unprecedented run for them. Really amazing year. And Drew Doughty and Jeff Carter and all those guys, Jonathan Quick, who really keyed the Kings to the comeback against the Sharks in that series. It was an amazing run by the Kings. An interesting note there, Mike Richards and Jeff Carter both played for the Flyers in 2010 when they performed that reverse sweep against the Bruins. They're the only two players in NHL history to be a part of a reverse sweep two times for different teams. Pretty crazy stuff, and I don't think that's probably going to happen again anytime soon. 
So like I said, with the Kings that year, they set a record for wins in elimination games. Both of the next couple of series went to Game 7, the second round there against the Ducks, and then the conference final against the Blackhawks. They took down the Blackhawks that year, and then they went on to face the Rangers in the Stanley Cup final, winning in dramatic fashion there. Alec Martinez scored that goal in overtime for the series clinching and Stanley Cup final clinching goal. It was really a crazy, crazy year, and the Kings rode that momentum all the way through the Stanley Cup playoffs to the Stanley Cup championship. Probably won't be done again anytime soon in that fashion. Jonathan Quick was really the story of that series. He keyed the Kings to a big Game 4 win. He only allowed two goals over the final three contests of the series. The Kings outscored the Sharks 12-2 over those games, including a 5-1 Game 7 win. Just completely wiped out the Sharks. And I remember the face on Joe Thornton after the game, just completely devastated. You could tell that that was really a turning point in his career. I thought the Sharks were going to get it done that year, and they probably could have if they had beaten the Kings. But the Kings, they took out the Sharks, the reverse sweep. They moved on. They won the Stanley Cup, and it was crazy. That's the last time it happened. That was 2014. Could we see it happen again this year? I don't know. The Edmonton Oilers are going to have to take some of those notes. Seems like the key in most of those series that we just talked about historically, there was some sort of spark from the goaltender. So maybe that means Mike Smith comes out and Koskinen comes in and takes the reins. I don't know. But there's got to be some sort of spark, some sort of momentum changer to propel the Oilers forward if they're going to have any chance against this high-flying Colorado Avalanche team. Like I said at the beginning of the video, I don't think it's going to happen but there's always a chance, and you know it's happened in the past. So let's keep our eyes on it. Let's see what happens in Game 4. I would expect a big effort from the Oilers, and uh, maybe they can spark something, get something going to head back to Colorado with the Series 3-1. to one. So we'll see what happens moving forward. I like that the Lightning got back into the series a little bit today. They have a big chance to tie it here in the next game against the Rangers. The Oilers again on live support. They're going to need a big game from Leon Dreisaitl. And Connor McDavid, once again, they're going to have to lean on those guys and see if they can get the series somewhat back within reach. But uh, Colorado looks really good. I'll be surprised if we have any additional notes being added to the Wikipedia pages for reverse sweeps this year. So Oilers fans, hang in there. Hold out hope a little bit. Go root your team on. See what they can do in Game 4. I would fully expect Colorado to uh, put the clamps on. They can smell the blood in the water. But you never know what's going to happen. NHL Stanley Cup playoffs. It's always crazy. There's always a chance. And it's always hard for teams to be closed out in elimination games. It's just one of those things that you see in hockey. They just don't go easy into the night. So again, thanks a lot, guys, for dropping by the channel. Can't wait to see what happens here as the conference finals play out. We move forward to the Stanley Cup final. I hope to have some more updates coming to you real soon. In the meantime, enjoy your evening. Enjoy the rest of your weekend. We'll catch up with you guys here real soon right here at Sasquatch NHL.